So, the dialogue that you've been practicing in cinema, it's time to make it a reality. Shocking and it's very heartbreaking. If you move twenty-five million people, I'll give you at least a ten to fifty kilometer ride on the motorcycle. Done. That sounds like a great deal. Namaskaram, Rakul, how are you? Namaskaram, how are you? <laughs> Sadhguru, I have to tell you that, you know, this is amazing what uh, the entire foundation and you have started, you know, awareness about the soil and it is my pleasure to be talking to you about this and understanding more about it and, you know, creating awareness in people. So to start, Sadhguru, you know, I've always been a nature lover, an admirer of, you know, how the earth is and the mother nature is. But uh, we never really thought of soil, right? That, that how, how do you think soil is central for, you know, balancing the ecology uh, and restoring the damage that has been done to uh, the environment? See, Rakul, yourself, you are a young woman, you look very far away from soil. But tell me your body, what is it made of? The food that you eat, where did the food that you eat come from? Most people these days think it comes from the store, <laughs> no, yeah. it's from the soil. Yeah. Where do the trees come from? From the soil. Where the crop come from? From the soil. Everything, whether you are a worm or an insect or a bird or an animal or a tree or a human being, essentially you are a product of soil. To put it simply, we are small pop-ups and we will pop back into the soil at some point. Right. So, right. this… we are all just soil in recycle, because we are carbon life. You know, today unfortunately, the social media and other areas, uh, and there are people who, uh, you know, who do read uh, school textbooks and think they are scientists, all <laughs> those people have made the word carbon like an ugly word. If yeah. you say carbon, they think some noxious something. No, carbon is the basis of our life. You and me are carbon life, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Carbon is the basis of who we are. So there is something called as a carbon cycle, which is always happening. In this, soil is the most significant aspect. That is where the carbon should be. Right now, everybody talking about air pollution and this and that, what it means is, the carbon that should have been in the soil is floating up as carbon dioxide or monoxide or whatever. Hmm. It should be in the soil. If it's in the soil, it's super productive. But it's somewhere else where it causes damage to you. That is what needs to change. How can we miss out the soil? People keep asking me this question, Sadhguru, how did you know all this? How did you become an environmentalist? I think being an environmentalist is a very vulgar thing to do because we are not about the environment. We are not about the ecology. We are the ecology. True. We, we are ecology, isn't it? Unfortunately, we think we are removed from ecology and we are going to take care of ecology. No, no. We are ecology. We are one part of the ecology. Unfortunately, we become a virulent part of the ecology. Uh, it is very important that we become little more benign ecology. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm not an ecologist, I'm not a scientist. I'm like a worm. I've crawled on this earth. So, I feel this earth and I know how it is. Yeah. I've lived on this planet for uh, six and a half decades. Hey, I shouldn't have revealed my age to you <laughs> <laughs> You are like you're born today, Sadhguru. I don't think anybody can match up to your energy levels. <laughs> when I say I've lived on this planet, people say, we also live on this planet. No, that is the problem. Most people… most people don't live on the planet. They're living in their own heads, their own… Thoughts and emotions are bec have become a cosmos by itself, have become a universe by itself. They don't live on this planet. If you live on this planet, like a worm, you're crawling actually. See, <laughs> if you ever went up in a hot air balloon and looked at people, they all look like worms crawling on the earth, all right? We are all worms crawling on the earth, it's just a question of perspective. So, if you really crawled on the earth, you would know whether the earth is rich or is it hurt, is it… Pay, is it in a pain or is it screaming? I can see wherever I walk, the planet or the soil is screaming, literally. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. is like if we peel off our skin and go stand in the sun, 
how it will feel. That's what we have done to the soil. Everything that is surface, we peel it off, we plowed it open and leave it open to the sun. This is killing the soil yeah. and uh, this is destroying the ecology. First, twelve yes. to fifteen inches of soil is the source of life for eighty-seven percent of life on this planet, including us. Wow! Just fifteen wow. inches, can you beat this? And this is the greatest magic in the universe, not in the solar system, in the entire universe. These fifteen inches or twenty inches of soil is the most magical thing, because if you sow death here, it sprouts life with great robustness. There is no other place in the universe where you can throw death and it'll bring back life to you. Uh, right now, somebody was advertising a week ago, it was in the news, that if you pay 1.7 uh, million dollars, see, if you want this, you can start making the money for that. 1.7 million dollars if you pay, they will… T when you are dead, they'll take your body and leave it in the space. So, in space, your body will not deteriorate because there is no oxygen and there are no microbial life. So, in the same condition as you died, it'll be floating all over the place for millions of years. So, they're offering this as a business. I'm saying, if you did not do anything eco-friendly in your life, at least when you die, put it back from where it came, isn't it? Yeah. This is the simplest… simplest contribution make is this, that what you have taken, at least you put it back. So, yeah. soil is the key, soil is the basis of everything. Especially yeah. in a tropical country, our rivers flow because of soil. We don't have any mountains here with ice caps or snow caps that it is melting and coming down to us. Only right. from Himalayas a little bit is coming, that accounts only for four percent of our river water. Rest mm -hmm. is all monsoon water, which comes down in seventy to hundred days. That water, soil should have the capacity to hold and let it flow for whole three hundred sixty-five days. Yeah. But once there is no organic content, that is not possible. So, this effort is just to change the policy in the country right. and in the world. Yeah, you're actually so right, Sadhguru, because the number of barren lands in the country has completely increased. The fertility of land has gone for a toss and we don't have… and then we are using more fertilizers and things like that to create the crop that we are consuming, you know? Sixty-two percent. Sixty-two percent of India's land is degraded. Sixty-two wow. percent of India's land has organic content less than 0.5 percent. This is on the verge of desertification. This is oh. desert. If oh you don't… if people don't understand what I'm saying, you take a plane from Delhi to Chennai, every five minutes look out, you will see a brown desert, except for Western Ghats and northeastern part of the country, the whole country looks like a desert. That's what we have done to this land, one of the most fer fertile lands in the world, where twelve months in a year you can grow crops. This is what we have done in the last forty to fifty years. We have farmed for over twelve thousand years, but we managed our soil because we consider our soil as our mother, you know? Mm. In Tamil Nadu, we call it Thai Mannu, everywhere else there is some reference to soil as mother, so we nurtured her. But in the last fifty years, we've gotten so modern, we somewhere, somehow think we can be born without a mother. I was just gonna say, coming from films, you know, we have grown up listening to these dialogues in films, which I think everybody who's watching this interview will be able to connect to Dharti Ma, Ye Ye Dharti Ne Mujhe Paida Kiya Hai, you know, all those heavy dialogues. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, I think it's just been limited to dialogues. And, and I feel… And you tell me, Sadhguru, how will we be able to create this personal emotion in the masses, in the people, to consider it their own? What do we need to do for so, them to do? We just have to extend the dialogue from the cinema to the society, yeah, that yeah. this should become the dialogue in the society. So this is what I'm trying to do. From March 21st, when I'm riding across these uh, 26 countries, 30, 100 days… huh? 30,000 30, kilometers, twenty-six nations, these one hundred days, the whole world should talk about soil. Can you engage a ten million people and make them talk about soil every day? Something, two minutes, talk about soil, say save soil. Because yeah. in a… when you live in a democratic country, your voice is very important. We have a way of aggregating these numbers in the social media. If we move three to three point five billion people, 
no nation in the world will ignore this, no government in the world will ignore this, no political party in the world will ignore this. They have to take note of it, 3.5 billion means 60 percent of the world's electorate. If 60 percent of the electorate speaks, tell me which politician or political party will ignore that. So, the dialogue that you've been practicing in cinema, it's time to make it a reality that we make this dialogue a part of our society. So, besides the dialogue, you know, of course, creating awareness is the first step of letting people know that this is a problem. But what do you see as a solution? Say, as a layman, if I have to tell someone that, you know, when we talk about water, we say save water, you know, don't have running water in your taps and give them small little examples. So, what can they do at a personal level in each household to protect the soil? See, uh, this is always the thing. First thing is we must decide in our life, are we doing things for our personal satisfaction or are we trying to create a solution? Hmm. If you are trying to do this for a personal satisfaction, you can take a small patch of land and, uh, you know, put some... Uh, your uh, vegetable waste, you can compost it and put it there and be very happy about it. I'm not saying that is not important, that is also important, your garden also should be rich. But how many people have a garden in the country, first of all? Okay? Big problem, yeah. So, the most important thing right now is to get this into the policy. Why it is this is most important is, let us say you have hundred acres, you are doing a great job of keeping your soil in great condition, but the next generation may ruin it once again. That's what we have done as a generation, all right? In the previous generations, the land was beautiful, now in just thirty, forty years we have done this, even if you keep it well for your generation, what is the guarantee next generation will keep it well? So this is why it must enter the policy. Otherwise, as, as I gave you the housing example, this yeah. is what is happening, people will cause damage. So there must be a law, if you own agricultural land, three to six percent minimum organic content should be there, because soil is not our property. Soil is a legacy we received from previous generations, we must pass it this way, to future generations, because every responsible scientist in the world is clearly saying, by 2045, we will be producing 40 percent less food and our populations will be over 9 billion, 9.2, 9.3 billion, that'll be the range. Is this a world you want to live in? No. All thousands of years of civilization will be washed up if there is three days of food shortage. Let's say you're in Mumbai. Fifty percent of the people, if they don't have food to eat for three days, you think you can live there? Is it… is it a possibility? No. I'm at this stage of my life, all I have to do is uh, die ten years early, that's all. <laughs> I'm okay. So this is not about me, this is not my moment, this is not this or that. This is our planet, if we don't act now, it'll be a life of regret later on. So it's our fundamental responsibility, we are in a cusp of time where we can turn it around. If we let this go for another thirty, forty years, it'll be very difficult to turn it around. Right now it's possible because uh, I know you're very concerned about health and nutrition and the type of food that you eat. See, right now for United States, I'm taking United States because there are more studies there than anywhere else. Right. Like for example, the vegetables in United States, how much nutrition they had in early twentieth century and how much nutrition they have now, if you look at it, it's gone down by ninety percent. Ninety… It's all genetically modified, it's all GMO, you know, based food. No, no, you can call it whatever, there's no nourishment, that's all. Yeah. In 1920, if you ate one orange, today you will have to eat eight oranges to get the same stuff into your body. Have you ever eaten eight or oranges in a day? Never. Is it, is it even a possibility, I'm asking? It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So this is what we have done to our food. This is because there are no nutrients. Right now, we've gone through this pandemic. See, any doctor, you don't need a great expert in uh, virology or something. Any simple doctor can tell you that if you lack vitamin A, vitamin uh, D, C, B6, B12, foliate, iron, magnesium, zinc, in your diet or in your body, you will be very susceptible to respiratory tract infections. Anybody right. can tell you. Right yeah. now, vitamin E is ninety percent deficient in most Americans, okay? 
Yeah. Most Americans are ninety percent deficient in vitamin E, forty-three percent deficient in vitamin C, forty per forty percent in uh, calcium. Like this, it goes on. And so I think mainly no, vitamin D also. People's immunities have gone all over the place. All things. I am not going into all the alphabets. I am just telling you a few things. Yeah. Right yeah. now, the richest nation, the richest nation in the world is reaching towards a million deaths with quarter hour population. This tells you clearly when soil doesn't have the necessary nutrients in it, this is what happens to the world, this is what happens to people. It doesn't matter how much money you have, how much wealth you have, how much comforts you have, it's not going to work because life is not coming from your air conditioning. Life is not coming from your refrigerator. Life is coming from the soil. Keeping it rich and well is a fundamental thing. We have to take care of this. These one hundred days, all of you who are in the movie industry, not just you, you must ignite everybody, that everybody should speak about soil for hundred days. Leave this high buy stuff and say save soil wherever you meet people, because this is important. As a generation, we need to do this now. Yeah, you know, when you are saying it, Sadhguru, you know, with the statistics and the way we are heading towards complete depletion, it is shocking and it's very heartbreaking. And uh, I assure you that everything, uh, you know, everyone around me will be hearing the same thing about saving soil because it's very important. It's, it's. I think it's high time. Otherwise, it's going to be irreversible, like you said. So, if you, I'm sorry. Yeah. If you, if you move ten million people, Rakul, I'll give you a hundred kilometer ride. How's that? Done. I have eighteen the million. On my, my eighteen million on my Instagram, and I think I'm going to scream. Oh, I, I lost it. I should have raised the number. Oh my god! I didn't <laughs> so know I that. I think number. I'm going to tell each one of them, please, please, please save soil because it's need of the hour. And then we could play uh, a round of golf, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We yeah. can definitely but, play a round of golf. I'm uh, offering this to various people. If they move, if you already have 18, if you move 25 million people, I'll give you at least a 10 to 50 kilometer ride on the motorcycle. Done. Done. That sounds like a great deal. So, last question, Sadhguru, uh, before, you know, we wrap, I want to know that in today is the age of social digital uh, space, you know, social media. And... Uh, uh, of course, we know that social media has its good and bad, but how do you think through social media, because we spoke about million of you know followers, how do you think we can motivate people? Because these are not the people who are going to be able to change policies. So, so how do you think social media will come into play? What can we all do? Um, you know, what is the role that it will play? See, uh, these are all the people who can change policy. You said they cannot, they are the people who change policy. Because in a democratic nation, it doesn't matter who you are. Because you are a star, do you have ten notes or only one note? Sorry? Because you are a film star, do you have ten oats or only one oat? One oat. Only one oat. And the man who attends uh, sees your cinema also has only one oat. So when it comes to democracy, this is the thing, nobody should think they are too small. Everybody has a vote, everybody has a voice. And the beautiful thing today is where social media is a tremendous tool. People are complaining about it because of their own compulsive usage of that. But I'm telling you, this is the first time in the history of humanity that we can sit here and talk to the entire world. Many great beings have come in this world. When they spoke, hardly ten people heard, all right? This is the first time we can talk to the world when we have such tools and technologies. At this time, if we do not transform the world, it simply means that we don't care enough. That's all it means. Yeah, yeah. I think the entire selfish attitude that I have lived and I don't care about the future generations needs to go away and a sense of responsibility, being citizens of the planet needs to step in and uh, I am... I'm very hopeful that this will happen, Sadhguru. This is a great initiative and uh, I would really be very happy to be of any sort of help for the same. So, uh, Rakul, about this, see, every human being is... Uh, when it comes to contribution, they think they are small. But you right. look at it in their personal life, when they have to get something, they are very big people, all right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, let them understand 
that every human being has a thing. Nobody is asking you what is your stature, who you are, are you rich, are you famous? You have a voice and you have a vote. Think of this as a global vote and make sure you vote by enhancing the message. One hundred days, every day, five to ten minutes, we are putting out, so, uh, you know, uh, toolkits for people how to start a Twitter account, how to start an Instagram account, how to start a Facebook account, how to enhance the message. Go through this for ten minutes and you will know, you download those apps and every day spend ten minutes for the future of your life and your children's life. When we say future, it is not far away future, we are not talking about two generations later. Every UN agency, I've been talking to all the UN heads, we have a very strong partnership with some of the UN agencies like UNCCD and uh, World Food Program. I was talking to the leaders of these organizations, they are saying they are expecting dozens of civil wars across the world by 2035. Wow! We... Because once there is food shortage, there will be fights, there will be riots, there will be wars within the countries. Yeah, yeah. That's… that is not where we should put up… push our country or the world, for that matter. So, let's make it happen. We will make it happen, Sadhguru. And as you were talking about these hundred days, it just struck me and maybe the organization… foundation can, you know, help that maybe through these hundred days, whenever there is through your journey, you know, an important landmark day of reaching out to people, Maybe I could be connected and do a live, give that information um, on those important key days so that there's a dialogue personally on the social media from my mm -hmm. end also happening for those hundred days. That's great. Uh, and uh, anyway, whenever you're willing, whenever you have the uh, needed uh, thing to do it, when you feel like it, uh, even when I'm riding on the motorcycle, I can broadcast both video and audio. It's all equipped like that. So great. if you come on for two, three minutes, uh, that chat could be interesting for uh, people who follow you. And uh, we want to raise your Instagram to twenty-five million so that you get a ride with me. <laughs> Absolutely. So, I am going to do that. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. Wonderful Sarkar. talking to you. Hope to see you Thank soon. You. Namaskaram. Thank Namaskaram. You.